Are we ready? Top of the morning to you. This is uh, a reminder to uh, gather your photographs, the old black and whites, the old chiseled out tablets from the Flintstone era for the last 70 years. Grosvenor has been evolving and we would like to have some type of a visual presentation. So if you have photographs, black and white negatives, anything, I'll copy them, return them to you, and we'll use what we can in a production. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Caitlin and I'm here on behalf of the Outreach Committee. We are the ones organizing the Perspective session this year. So Perspectives is happening on March 24th and we're very excited to host Angie Bug as our guest presenter. She will be, she's an engineer, sorry, an energy conservation engineer and she'll be sharing her thoughts on how we can improve our energy and building infrastructure as part of our Green the Building initiative and she'll offer ways in which we can lower greenhouse gas emission, emissions and uh, discuss what our options could be for moving forward. It's sure to be a really great discussion and presentation, so I thoroughly encourage you to come out. It's next week Sunday at around 11.30 down in Schnell Hall. There will be a light lunch served, and I really hope some of you can come out. There is a sign-up sheet at the back, just so that we know general numbers for lunch, and if you have any questions, please feel free to come and ask me. Thank you. Good morning, Nabucco tasked me with getting signatures. So this is uh, Westminster in Humboldt is uh, celebrating becoming an affirming ministry this afternoon. And there's a crew from Grosvenor going to celebrate. So this is just a, con it doesn't look formal, but it's a congratulations from GPUC folks for becoming an affirming ministry. So I'm sitting right there, there's my coffee. If I haven't already spoke to you, come and sign the congratulations. And thank you for everyone who's already signed up for the Easter dinner. I am very willing to make a page two for the sign-up sheet. Thank you. And speaking of dinners, uh, on Monday, Thursday at 5.30, we have a supper and service here. Uh, I see there's only one more spot for chili or uh, soup in a crock pot to arrive and a few spots for things like buns and veggies. So if you are coming and would like to bring something, please sign up. Thanks for the reminder. My brain doesn't work the way it used to, so I need those reminders. Um, the HOPE workshop is coming up for those of you who might be interested, and I'd be willing to answer any questions. It's a workshop for relief of trauma, and. Uh, it helps us to feel more comfortable in our own bodies. So if you're interested, just pick up one of these or call me. Good morning, I'm Dawn Weber and I have three announcements. One, we have one spot left for two dozen muffins for somebody to buy or bake two dozen muffins and bring them to church next Sunday for uh, the Good Food Program at the U of S. Number two, the uh, I'm with the Saskatchewan United Church of Canada Women. And uh, if you noticed in the leaflet or in the regional rambler, we have now have the uh, registration form to, and it's $30 per person and includes lunch and, and muffins and coffee. So, and our guest speaker is the very Reverend Jordan Cantwell that she's doing our, actually she's doing our worship service. And then we have Dallas Arbuckle, um, Carol Dallas Arbuckle from uh, Ottawa and she's gonna talk about the 65th and the various grants that are, open to the women. And it's just not UCW, it's all the women of the United Church, because we all work within the United Church, with whether we belong to the UCW or not. And the third one is Drive Alive, and it's for drivers 55 and over, and I've got a sign-up sheet back there, and um, it, you can 
we're just going to see where we have the most people um, for April or no October or November. And we need at least 10 people. Thank you. Good morning, um, Ursula. With Nabucco and Vicky, I've been on a committee um, exploring ways to, um, to respond to the crisis in Gaza and Israel and Gaza. And so we are, um, as you can see from the leaflet, there's going to be a pilgrimage next weekend. And there's a lot of details on there. One day you can walk 29 kilometers and Sunday afternoon just 13. Now I know that I for one can't do that. Uh, but there are many ways you can join in this pilgrimage. You might just want to go and join in their opening uh, prayer, closing prayer. You might, if you're ambitious, uh, um, want to go and meet them at their lunch break on Saturday in the north, it's the northeast swale. Um, on, at the bottom of that, uh, the poster, there's a section that says more details. And it's on, this is a global movement in Gaza. Ceasefire Pilgrimage is the name of it. Came out of Australia. You go to their find, uh, find, join a pilgrimage page, and there's a list of all the countries, and within that list, all the towns or groups that are organizing pilgrimages. And we're on there. And you can get all the details on, on that. One thing I will draw your attention to um, is on the poster you'll see short options. And so if you want, you could drive to Rotary Park, we'll meet at Rotary Park, and then we'll join the main pilgrimage for the last two and a half kilometers. Uh, it ends at First Mennonite um, Church, which is opposite City Hospital. Or all the others have been circular routes, or you can go to First Mennonite, walk to Rotary Park, and then join everybody on that. So those are the options. If you're interested in, in tapping into that, do let me know, as I just need, it's helpful to have for logistics. And next time, in, in what's it, April, uh, Red team is on the cards for um, worship leadership, so I'll be in contact with you. Thank you. Good morning. The reason I'm announcing this next concert is that the proceeds from the concert will go to Kids of Note uh, as a fundraiser. And uh, it is a, a Ensemble Caprice, uh, which is... Um, from uh, they've they've come from another country and I haven't been given the details by the organizer, but they're doing um, the music of Handel, Telemann, and Hanukkah um, at the uh, St. John's Cathedral this coming Thursday. So it will be uh, apparently a very beautiful concert. Um, adults twenty dollars, seniors ten dollars and you can get your tickets um, online through the Broadway Theatre or at the door. So that's, uh, the name of the concert is Art Chorale, and it's this Thursday night at 7.30 at St. John's Cathedral. And again, uh, top of the morning to you for St. Patrick's Day. Uh, I'm also on the theme of peace uh, for Palestine-Israel. There is a webinar coming up called Peace Solutions for Palestine and Israel. It is sponsored by the group of uh, federal ridings here in Saskatoon for the New Democrats, and there's a link to register. It's this Tuesday at 7 o'clock, and our speakers include Dr. Cheryl Nestel, who is a member of the steering committee of the Jewish Faculty Network from the University of Toronto, Heather McPherson, who's the NDP MP for a critic for international development, and Michael Link, who is a professor emeritus from Western University and the UN Special Rapporteur for Human Rights in the Occupied Palestinian Territory. So I'll leave this information in the back. Thanks very much.
Good morning. I'm Sheila Caddo, and I'm Grubner Park United Church's congregational leader for today. What a blessing to have so many events and so many hardworking committees doing things this month. You can tell it's coming up to Easter and spring, and there's just a lot happening. Um, so today, on behalf of our congregation and our minister, Nibuko Iwai, welcome. Welcome to everyone here in person and those joining us online. Um, on the screen, when you see asterisks, please choose the posture for singing or sitting, uh, for singing that fits for you right now. You may wish to stand or sit or move around. Whatever you need to do is fine. And uh, I think Anne is going to be our candle lighter, so we're ready to do that. Sorry. We light this Christ candle to remind us of the Holy Presence. We come to learn to love each other and the world with all that we are, in Jesus' name. We light this orange candle to acknowledge the relationships we seek to strengthen on Treaty 6 territory. The land is frozen, and it looks like there's very little growth on the surface. But below the earth, we know things are happening. The land is resting and preparing for a new season of growth. We, too, seek growth and new life, and sometimes it takes time to prepare ourselves. We prepare to learn and live out truth and reconciliation. We are grateful for all who have lived for generations on Treaty 6 land and continue to share stories and live in relationship with the land. We acknowledge people who were and are part of Treaty 6, the Cree, Dakota, Nakota, Lakota, Dene, Soto, and the homeland of the Métis nations. We light this rainbow candle to remind us that those who have been turned away forgotten or persecuted, find belonging in Jesus. Two-spirit, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, questioning, intersex, asexual, plus all others in our sexual and gender diversities and allies. May we be a sanctuary, a shelter, a safe place to be ourselves, to live love and acceptance. And now it's time to, for the passing of the peace. Wagotawin, salam, shalom. Creator calls us to live in peace. Peace be with you and also with you. This seems like a hard time in our world. And Lent can be a hard time in our faith life. Here we are moving towards the crucifixion and it feels like the world has not changed. We are tempted to hopelessness and despair. We see around us pain, grief, war, the environment in crisis, racism, homophobia, transphobia. Friends are in pain. Meaninglessness is hovering. Pandemic traumas linger. Privilege can blind or feel like shame. And there is so much, too much to do. And so we wonder, did Jesus' life, or do our lives, make any difference at all? Every year in the Christmas season, we celebrate God's coming to us in Jesus, the child, a tiny child, and yet children around the world and right here at home hurt today. In the Easter season, we, we say that in Jesus, God has shown us that life wins over death. 
And yet, it seems to hover always nearby. As we should, the church questions our role. Our role is being questioned. Expansive theologies are trashed by others, and yet we feel called to make a difference. In the midst of it all, we ask, where is God? It's not a bad question to ask. Where is God? Our stories are full of the creator's hope, presence, and love. There are clues and covenants and promises that God makes repeatedly with the ancestors and with us. And we witness Jesus choosing life again and again. Our mystics and our poets see the signs. We see God's presence here and now, knowing that our neighbors at Knox, Mayfair, and Grace Westminster United Churches, and siblings in Christ around the world are offering these words, hearing the stories and working to make a change. May this Lenten journey be a time of asking the questions and watching for the signs. Together, we worship God. As we do our prayer for beginning, does anyone remember the American Sign Language for turn? Turn, turn, okay. So we do a little bit of American Sign Language, so turn. So I would ask that when you hear me say, um, in Lent, we turn our lives to life-enhancing changes with we turn towards God. We'll try that together. In Lent, we turn our lives to life-enhancing changes. We turn towards God. Our God is offering signs of the change to come. Like voices crying out for peace all over the world. In Lent, we turn our lives to life giving changes. We turn towards God. Our God is also offering signs of hope, signs of love, like communities of faith sharing in Lent and Easter together, feeding the hungry and living out apologies to those we have hurt. In Lent, we turn our lives to life-enhancing changes. We turn towards God. Our God is offering signs of hope, signs of hope like ordinary people doing the work of reconciliation, mental health awareness, crisis support, planting gardens and planting peace. In Lent, we turn our lives to life-enhancing changes we turn towards God. Our God is offering signs that the world is about to turn. Signs that the world is about to turn like congregations greeting, affirming all people are beloved, welcoming refugee families from all over the world. We turn our lives to life-enhancing changes. We turn towards God. Our God is offering signs that we are here today in this moment for a reason. We are here for a reason. We are part of this time of worship. We are part of the change. May we be strengthened here to help bring about the turning of the world. Amen.
for our prayer of confession today, I'll ask that when you hear me say, as we turn from fear towards justice and mercy, do you remember the sign language for justice? Justice. Justice. Um, I, I, please respond with grant us forgiveness and peace. As we turn from fear towards justice and mercy, grant us forgiveness and peace. Holy One, sometimes we hang on to so much. Clothing, memories, resentments that we are called to release. But sometimes we believe that these are the things that define who we are when we are afraid to release that which keeps us bound. As we turn from fear towards justice and mercy, grant us forgiveness and peace. As we follow Jesus, sometimes we find it hard when we are called to let go of one identity one part of who we've always been, and fear that we may lose even, even as we struggle to grow. As we turn from fear towards justice and mercy, grant us forgiveness and peace. Receive the prayers deepest in our hearts and minds as we name our fears and anxieties, our longings for wholeness. We offer them in the silence of our hearts. As we turn from fear towards justice and mercy, grant us forgiveness and peace. as we turn towards the life of Jesus, as we turn towards the Spirit's delight, as we turn towards the Creator's call, may we keep turning towards the holy, knowing we are forgiven people. Thanks be to God. And I'll invite Helena, Helena, where are you? There you are! Helena, oh, uh, we're going to watch a video first. We're about a week behind because we had a different way of starting Lent for we had a remembrance service of, of Lent. So we haven't actually gotten into our Lenten rituals yet. So this will be our first Sunday to do that. But the the um, symbolism of it is it's kind of scarred and burnt. So it so kind of takes into account the uh, Ash Wednesday, but also just the scarring of what we were talking about. The world is a scarred place and we're trying to find healing and things. And so we've, and it's kind of off skew and off kilter because it's, we're all off skew and off <laughs> um, and so that's D Dylan could you pause it creating it that way so and I'm realizing this doesn't make sense probably starting this way um, we have a cross uh, Knox United Church has a cross that Nabucco and I made together um, Grace Westminster has made this cross uh, Mayfair has a cross that was created by the folks at 
uh, I'm not sure. So all four churches that are co collaborating in this art installation, this writing and making and doing through Lent, all, of, all four of our churches have made cro crosses and then gifted them to another cross. So this beautiful puzzle of a cross that we have was made by the folks at Grace Westminster Church. Uh, since it was made, and I think I'll explain this and then continue with the, the video, if that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, Nabucco's been talking a lot about fears. It's a fearful time. And um, lots of you have written your fears or emailed your fears or written your fears on pieces of paper. Those have been laid down at the base of the cross. They were paper mache onto our um, wire skirt and um, then painted. <laughs> um, and that's what we have done so far. And then I think at this point, do I need to tell more? And then we can listen to the other churches. Basically, this video is the other churches talking about what they have made and where their start was to this creating for Lent. So. Yeah, it, it, hopefully, who, who, whatever it is that you choose to do with it, you can sort of work with that with your symbols yeah. and attach things if you need to. And then the other side is just is clear. Because kind of thought as um, I guess not to suggest what you should do with it but I know that your community has just become firming so maybe maybe you want to create a rainbow on it you know it's just, it's sort of an open open palette to what represents Easter and new life for, for your congregation that sounds like a good idea yeah it sounds yeah. good yeah. Yeah. Oh, I used acrylic paint the primary colors mixed them to the brown we wanted <laughs> swap that on uh, and uh, the other side, I broke open some old uh, glitter pens that I had for kids oh. and uh, mixed that with glue. I think it was decoupage, actually. And um, so the um, celebration side is sparkly. Oh, and it's you know, it using up old hand. stuff that we have on hand in the house. And then last Sunday, our congregation, uh, we celebrated Ash Wednesday on the Sunday. And after the deposition of ashes, um, anybody that wanted to was asked to come forward and um, put their um, ashes on the cross. Good idea. Um, so uh, Marjorie and I came back from that meeting and sort of looked at each other went, what are we going to do? Anyways, then we got talking and I was telling her in another whole piece of stuff about a little children's time that I was thinking just you know, you use the puzzle, then you put up the puzzle and the piece is missing, and it's like, what piece is missing? Well, you are, of course, we all need to be part of the bigger picture. Um, mm -hmm. And Marjorie looked at me, she said, puzzle pieces. And I went, yeah, puzzle pieces. And she said, for the cross. Yeah. <laughs> we can take the light colored pieces and the dark colored pieces, oh, and we can create a cross out of those, mm -hmm. like a two-sided cross. Oh. Well, this is uh, the cross that Mayfair made, and, and actually my husband made it, but we decided to use our congregation's fingerprints so that part of us is going with it to, where is it going, to Grace Westminster. And that's all of us on the steps there when we exchanged our crosses. So this is an art installation. Grace Westminster has made our cross. We've made a cross. The churches that are sharing in um, this time of Lent are all doing something different but similar. Um, the special class a couple weeks ago uh, made special dough uh, using coffee grounds. I have a lump of it here in my hand and I have a finished stone. Inside the stones are special messages that we'll break open and read on Easter Sunday. We've made some, and we're inviting you to come up and participate in making of the stones. The children will be making stones as well. Um, and I'll be at the front there. Um, and um, 
I'm not sure what else I need to tell you. <laughs> I find it, um, it, it's got many moving parts. So our fears have been laid at the base of the cross and on the cave. Uh, now we are creating stones to create an installation. Uh, next week we will be laying palm branches and crosses, and crosses at the base of the cross. Um, and then they'll be at the celebration on Easter. If you take a peek, there is a celebration side to the cross as well. Thank you, Selena. Oh, I, <laughs> I was just going to demonstrate. Uh, we'll be coloring the messages, or not coloring them, folding them, and then they go inside the dough. So uh, those of you who actually listen better when you're doing other things, you're welcome to come sit at the front and make um, some treasure stones as we continue with the worship. So Helena, you're going to be there and she will give you some help if you'd like to do that. First, we have a contemporary reading, and we will, I will read John 12, verses 20 to 33. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. You have toiled the soil of my grave, beloved. Scatter me. Let me slip through your fingers. Drop me. Let me fall into the earth of you, disappear into you great fertile source, womb, globe, garden, tomb, holy darkness. Let the little meanness of me die for love of you. My husk will fall, a broken heart. What is within given, urged, born of your unseeable mystery will emerge, fragile, green, tender, muscular, later. But first let me fall into you and die in you, beloved soil of love. John 12, among those who had come to worship at the Passover festival were some Greeks. They approached Philip, who was from Bethsaid in Galilee, and put forth this request. Please, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew, and together the two went to tell Jesus. Jesus replied, now the hour has come for the chosen one to be glorified. The truth of the matter is, unless a grain of wheat falls on the ground and dies, it remains only a single grain. But if it dies, it yields a rich harvest. If you love your life, you'll lose it. If you hate your life in this world, you'll keep it for eternal life. Anyone who wants to work for me must follow in my footsteps, and wherever I am, 
my worker will do there, be there too. Anyone who works for me will be honored by Abba God. Now my soul is troubled. What will I say? Abba, save me from this hour. But it was for this very reason that I have come to this hour. Abba, glorify your name, a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowds that stood nearby heard this and said in a clap of thunder, said it was a clap of thunder. Others said it was an angel speaking. Jesus answered, it was not for my sake that this voice came, but for yours. Sentence is now being passed on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be overthrown. And when I am lifted up from this earth, I will draw all people to myself. By these words, Jesus indicated the kind of death he would die. Hear what the church is saying. The Spirit is saying to the church, thanks be to God. to tell them, but how were they to know? It seems so hard to believe. He tried to teach them and prove that it was so. This gift that only God could conceive. Greater Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. 
most of us have experienced change in our lives. After all, life keeps changing. In 1955, people were saying things like, if they raise the minimum wage to a dollar an hour, no one will be able to hire anybody. In the 2017 movie Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, a person who has been trapped inside a video game from 1997 asked this question after hearing all these conversations around him. Does phone mean something different now? In today's gospel lesson, we hear how the Greeks have come wanting to meet Jesus. They are outsiders. And the disciples, well, they aren't always known for their hospitality. At, at least um, they didn't bar them like they did the children. And so they conferred. The Greeks talked to Philip, presumably because he came from up north and maybe he understood the language. And um, Philip talked to Andrew, and then together they went to talk to Jesus. And instead of answering or going right up to talk to the Greeks who are waiting to talk to him, Jesus starts to tell one of his stories. You know, one of his stories that don't seem to make any sense and aren't don't seem to be really relevant to the conversation that is happening then and there. Jesus says, unless a grain of wheat is buried in the ground, dead to the world, it is never any more than a grain of wheat. But if it is buried, it sprouts and reproduces itself many times over in the same way. Anyone to, who holds on to life just as it is, destroys that life. But if you let it go, reckless in your love, you'll have it forever, real and eternal. David Giuliano in Postcards from the Valley Encounters with Fear, Faith, and God writes, as a church, we must confront our own fears if we are going to speak to a fearful culture, we are afraid about money, about numbers, about being inefficient or wrong, about buildings, about all the painful losses that change demands. Countless decisions in our church have been made and actions taken out of fear. Too many of us cling like shipwrecked survivors to what we know rather than risk the unfamiliar. Fear can make us cling to things, to people, to ideas, to ways of doing things even if they are not good for us or the world. In the church, Giuliano calls this baking pierogies again this year so that we can afford to bake them again next year. We do things over and over in a desperate event, uh, effort to avoid the painful changes that God is working in us and through us. Since the pandemic, we have learned to do things differently, to do things in a new way. Those of you who are, who are new, uh, you will not know that uh, during the pandemic, we did a major renovation. This church used to have pews. It used to have a carpet. This area was much smaller. We didn't used to have a lift so that pe anybody could lead in worship. And here's another one. This is our temporary offering box. Well, it's not as substantial as the uh, oak plates that used to get passed around. And it looks, well, it looks like a shoebox with a hole in it. And it has a lid because that's our security system. <laughs> but just in case you wanted to know why we stopped passing the offering plates around, why we stopped, we used to receive it, pass the pews, and then bring the offering plate up and place it on the communion table. 
When we returned to in-person worship earlier in COVID, we didn't want to pass the offering plate between people. That would mean we would get too close and everyone would be touching the offering plate and then maybe touching their faces and we found it took up time in the worship service. And some people, as the plate goes by, found it difficult to not put something in the plate even if they couldn't afford it. They felt ashamed if it went by and they didn't put anything in it. And many give to the world through the church by par. So people who are um, uh, members and adherents of Grosvenor Park give through pre-authorized remittance, which is easy to do if you're part of the community of faithful people. So it comes out of my bank account every month. So you pass a plate around and half the people are on par, so they don't put anything on the plate. So it's empty and it goes around and you think, that looks really bad, especially to visitors who don't know. That looks really bad. But then some people think, well, that box really isn't secure. Uh, the plates weren't secure either, really. There also isn't the ritual of putting the money on the plate and bringing it up to the front. That there isn't that visual, symbolic moment of offering what we have given to God. And there's the ever-present financial concern. Some people might not give even though they could because there isn't the social pressure because the plate isn't coming right in front of you. In particular on high holy days like Christmas. So on Christmas we had pretty much a full house and there was a lot of visitors and there was about $100 in the offering plate not including those who might have donated online. I donate by par, it's in my budget, it happens automatically out of my bank account. Every year I up it just a little as my salary goes up just a little. But when I'm in another church, church I look for an e-transfer sign because I don't carry cash. I don't even have a small little change purse for a few coins. I even use my phone instead of an actual debit card or a credit card. So what is your thought about offering and offering plates? About the ritual of giving, seeing the plates go by, bringing up to the front. As church leaders, and especially the worship committee, these are some of the things we talk about. These are some of the things that concern us. And sometimes our fears about economic sustainability has too much sway in our decision making. So for you, does passing the offering plate and bringing it forward help your spiritual growth? Does it symbolize something important? Or do you have that same feeling when you put something into the shoebox? Or when you notice that your par has gone out of your bank account? Do you say, this is my gift to the people of God? So I invite you to send, send me an email or talk to the worship committee. Let us know what you think, but this because this is one of these ongoing dilemmas that we frequently talk about. The worship committee will receive feedback to faithfully, prayerfully ponder, as it does with most subjects, to seek the call of God into the future. And we will not, we will try so hard to not act in fear. Because fear is always about the future. We don't really fear the past, and we don't really fear the present. Fear is an act of the imagination. Our imaginations can get so preoccupied with fearful visions that dreams of a world transformed have no space to arise amongst us. There's no room for God's dream to take seed in us. We become so concerned with staying alive 
that we don't really live. We do things for the sake of survival. And when we do things for the sake of survival, it means that often the things that make our life meaningful don't survive. We want to do things, we're creatures of habit, in the same way. So when a new opportunity comes around, it's hard to change. It's hard to see the blessings of the Greeks amongst us. It's hard to make decisions based on trust, knowing that death is not always a tragedy. That the death of a seed is necessary for new life, to spring open. It takes courage and strength and persistence for that seed covering to be softened, for new seeds to push their way out of that covering to be welcomed into the garden. Finally, and this is the exciting thing for us, fear is also often a sign that God wants something of or from us. When we hear the angel whisper, be not afraid, it signals God's call to be part of something new. It's a risk to shed our husks, and the seed may not grow, but sprouting is the purpose of the seed. Unless a grain of wheat is buried in the ground, dead to the world, it is never more than a grain of wheat. But if it is buried, it sprouts and reproduces itself many times over. In the same way, anyone who holds on to life just as it is destroys that life. But if you let it go, reckless in your love, you'll have it forever, real and eternal. And near the end of the gospel passage, it's clear, Jesus doesn't care what our background is, who our family is, how much money we have. Instead, Jesus says, when I am lifted up, I will draw all people to myself. Not people who look like me, act like me, think like me, but people who seek life, new life, bursting out of seed husks and pods. In Jesus is welcome to the Christian journey, new life, for all. Thanks be to God. Now, this next hymn I'm going to introduce, this was written by Toyohiko Kagawa, who was born in 1888 and lived until 1960. He was a Japanese Protestant Christian pacifist, a Christian reformer, and a labor activist. Kagawa wrote, spoke, and worked at length on ways to employ Christian principles in the ordering of society and cooperatives. His vocation to help the poor led him to live among them. He advocated for women's suffrage and promoted a peaceful foreign policy. So this is um, a song written by Kagawa. And I'm going to read the first words. I'll say a, a phrase, invite you to repeat it after me, and we'll sing that first, and then we'll sing it in English. So I'll, I'll say a line, I'll pause, and then you can repeat it after me. Hitotsubu no, hitotsubu no, mugi wa ochikeri, mugi wa ochikeri. Chino ueni, chino ueni, mata hae izuru, mata hae izuru. Haru o machitsutsu, haru o machitsutsu, mata hae izuru, mata hae izuru. 
春を待ちつつ春を待ちつつ」。This is from Outreach, and it's the mission and service message. When we come together and get to know one, each other, we have a community. Signing up for a course is both exciting and nerve-wracking. We think about what skills we'll learn, how quickly we'll see improvement, and how naturally talented we may be. In Sambor, Ukraine, Ukraine, English teacher Ilona is encouraging her learners to challenge that way of thinking and enjoy the aspect of social time with one another while learning English. This class, supported by Mission and Service partner ACT Alliance, is part of a <coughs> psychosocial support program for Ukrainians displaced by war. Ilona and her family were also displaced by conflict in the Ukraine, and she is now actively contributing to the well-being of others in similar situations. While online learning expands opportunities and access to learning, distance learners miss crucial social engagement and human interaction. Ilona shares, when we come together and get to know each other, we have a community. We can open up and share our thoughts, feelings, and experiences. In a low pressure learning environment, students can feel comfortable as they learn new skills and learn about each other. Thank you for the support you show to, through mission and service. 
as our neighbors endure the ongoing impacts of war and conflict. In the season of Lent, we are called to turn our life, our love, our hope towards the love of Jesus lived out in the world, to journey in despair and in hope, in joy and in wonder. Into the world, we offer our love, our life, our prayers, our gratitude. Our offering is a way in which we express our gratitude. The support for our ministries is what people give generously to. Our money and work support this church. In faith, we try to live love. We give because the love of God lives in us and gives us the time of Lent to consider who we are as God's people. We give through the church to the world because we believe that God calls us to love and care for the world. As followers of Jesus, we give in thanksgiving and wonder. Thanks be to God for all you have given. You know what the box looks like for the offering, and it's now back at the uh, back of the sanctuary, or you may choose to give a donation online or through a PAR, pre-authorized remittance from bank accounts. Um, and uh, if you are doing an e-transfer, it's donation.gpuc at gmail.com. So now we'll join together in the prayers of the people. At Grosvenor Park United Church, the prayers of the people are done by the people. For confidentiality concerns, these prayers are muted from the live streaming. Prayers can be shared at the Grosvenor Family Facebook page, which requires permission to join, or are listed in the leaflet, Grosvenor's email communication.
And now let's say the Jesus prayer together in uh, any words that are the best for you. Our Father and Mother, our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Just before the final blessing, Marnie, can I ask you to turn around? And if you are planning to come to the Thursday um, supper, Monday, Thursday, can you just put up your hand? Because we just want to make sure we have enough food. Yeah. I'll keep talking while you count. Keep your hand up. So also, if you are a young adult, that is 18 to 30-ish, you are welcome to come downstairs to the kitchen for lunch, which is chili and rice. Um, people who are going to Humboldt for the Affirming Ministries celebration at Westminster, we're leaving at 12.15 at the parking lot. There's two car loads going. Um, if you want to have lunch, you can, there's probably enough chili and rice for everybody who is hoping to go to that as well if you didn't bring your lunch. Um, so we'll just continue with our blessing. We hear these words. For I am with you always. For God is love. For we are blessed people who seek in turn towards God every day. In God's blessing, we receive joy and wonder and energy. The grace of Christ, the love of God, the delight of the Holy Spirit is with us all. Thanks be to God.
it would be over here. Yeah. Not counting Dylan. Yeah. 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 Yeah.